Welcome back to the channel, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Idaho Fabricator. I'm Steven, and uh, today we're gonna install the steering column in Project Transformation, the 53 Chevy truck. But before that, I wanted to just follow up on one of my previous videos, and that is my pan hard bar install. I got it all finished. I got the tabs welded on the frame. Everything looks good. It's at right height. And uh, this is the diagonal link that was in there. And so that's no longer there. It gives me more uh, exhaust room in there. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. So let's get onto the steering column, all right? Come on over to the table. All right, so it took a while to get my column in. Everything was back ordered for like, seems like ever. But um, this is the column I got. It's uh, made by I Did It. And um, I chose the bare steel version. There are, I think, three versions you can get. Um, bare steel, polished, chrome, maybe four. And then black powder coated. But I'm going to paint this to match the color of the interior of the truck. So I'm just going to paint it. And plus, you know, when I was fitting this in the truck, taking the brackets off and on. I must have pulled this out of there over a dozen times and it probably would have gotten scratched if it was chrome. So for me, this was a good choice. Um, let's see, just a, just a follow up. When you measure a column or when you're buying a column, they are measured from this edge here to the end of the shaft, which is 30 inches. This is a 30 inch column. And I ordered a floor shift column, so no gear selector. So that made the column even more compact, give me a little more arm room. And I also, you can, there are a bunch of options when you order these columns. You can get them with cruise control installed, puts it on the stock here. You can also get it with windshield washer and wiper controls built in. And then what happens is you end up getting more of these connectors filled in. Okay. But I'm going to put my windshield washer on the dash like the factory did. Because I'm trying to keep, you know, the flavor of the truck kind of old. And um, I don't think I'm going to do cruise control because, you know, it's basically going to be pedal to the metal. I mean, what do you need cruise control for, right? Anyway, um, so there's the column I got. And uh, these are the uh, factory brackets for the column, okay? And I like them, they look good and um, they work fine. They fit the column perfectly. So they're exactly fit a two inch column, which is what this is, okay? And um, when I, first when I installed these, if you remember, I had this little, um, little um, jig that I made to simulate the width of this. And I actually got it pretty close, so I'm kind of stoked about that. But when I put this column in and mounted these to the dash in the original factory location, they hit here and they wouldn't allow the column to go, it would, the column wouldn't stick through the floor. So it was just kind of hanging loose at the floor. So what I needed to do is I needed to move this down, or I decided to move this down, mount it down farther on the column so that I could do a couple things. I could get this to go through the floor. I could also scooch the column closer to the dash, and I'll show you when we put it in the truck. And so that would give me even more arm room. So in order to move this, I had to come up with a bracket, all right? The first bracket I came up with was this guy here, okay? And this is about an inch, about an inch and an eighth or so. And the way this fits on there is this bracket goes like that, okay? And then the column lays into that, and then this goes on top and holds the column, and it fits in the dash like that. And this curved piece fits into the curved piece on the dash. Well. The idea was 
there's two, two reasons why I wanted to do this. So let's go into the cab really quick and let me show you um, the problem that I encountered in there, all right? So join me in here and we will show you what's going on. So you can see here that I've got this, this is the original brace for the dash to the firewall. And then these arms in here are the arms that brace the brake booster, okay? And the way that the way the original column went in is a bolt went through here and then through all these brackets and then a nut. And so every time you wanted to move the column, you had to, and these, you know, require a little bit of, you know, massaging to get the holes to line up. So it was really a hassle. So my idea was twofold. Number one, move the bracket back, okay? So this front hole would go through and mount these um, braces, and then the bracket would just stay on the dash, okay? And then the back holes, I would run a bolt up through the column mount and put a nut on it and tighten it up, okay? Well, I did that. And what I discovered was this dash, it, it kind of goes straight for quite a ways. I hope you can see that okay. And it didn't give me enough room to get a nut on top of this. I just, so I needed to move it back farther. Okay, so let's go back and let me show you what I did. So this was my version 1.0. And this is my version 2.0. And this was an inch and an eighth, and this is, let me get to center to center here. This is two inches. Okay, so I moved this back two inches from the front of the dash. And it'll actually look like this in the truck. Okay, and then I welded some nuts on there so that I could just thread a bolt in and I wouldn't have to fuss around with a wrench. So, um, and this works perfect. Now, if you're probably wondering, how'd you make that? Well, I'm gonna show you, because it's really easy. I took a piece of pipe, and this is two and a half inch di outside diameter pipe. And you'll notice that I just cut a section out of it, okay? And then, I took two pieces of flat stock, right? And I made these little pieces here. And so, in essence, I would have that curved piece, and then I would have the flat stock up against it like that. All this stuff would be cut to size. And then I just weld it on the each side, then flip it over and weld this side, okay? And then just hit it with the belt sander to get it smooth. And I ground down the welds because I thought it looked nicer. And, and it's really easy to make, guys. So, um, and the reason that I needed this curve in here was because this original bracket isn't flat across the top. This part bulges, bulges out, so I had to make clearance for it. And then you can see there that there's ample clearance. So that once you get the sides and everything welded on and get it flat the way you want it, then it's just a real easy deal. You just center this on here, right? Clamp it to the bench and then center punch it with alignment punch. And then move this guy down, center it, mark it, and then go ahead and drill your holes. And uh, this is, let me get you some measurements in case you guys wanna make one of these. This is four and a half inches total. It is about just almost three inches deep. And then uh, these holes are two inches center to center. And then this spacing here is just whatever these guys turn out to be. It's, I found it's best to use these to mark because then you know it's exactly gonna fit. So, so that's what I did to mount the column here. Now I had to figure out at this end how to mount the column to the floor. So let me show you what I figured out. I started out 
I did, there's, you know, I wanted to show you guys that, you know, like, I get these ideas and they don't always work out perfectly every time. Sometimes I have to, like, see it. I see it in my head and then I make it to look at it. And then I either like it or I don't like it. So this was the first one I came up with. It's made out of two inch exhaust pipe. And then I use what's called a coupling nut. And so I just, this thing, pretend like this was solid piece. And I just welded this coupling nut on and then cut through it with a bandsaw. And as soon as I did it, it spread apart like that. And then I just drilled out one side of this so there was no threads on it so that I could thread a cap screw in and clamp it on the steering column. And then I just put a tab there. Well, this just seemed a little light duty for me. I'm, I kind of overbuild things. And so I came up with version 2.0. I upsized this and this plate here. And I went one size bigger on this coupling nut. This is a 5 8 coupling nut. Same thing, I just welded on. And once I cut it, it just spread apart. It just doing, opened right up. The problem with this one was I centered this coupling nut and it hit the firewall. I couldn't get it to go down flat on the floor. So I had to move the coupling nut up higher so that it would clear the floor because the floor comes up at an angle, the, the firewall does. And then rather than have bolts going through it, I decided I'd weld studs on it so that I could just install it from I wouldn't need somebody inside the cab putting a wrench on those while I tightened up these nuts here. So that's what I came up with that. And I think we're ready to install this in the truck. Yeah, I think we're ready to install it. So let's get in the truck and put this thing in. I'll show you how it goes together. Okay, put that in my lap. Turn on my my light here. Get it just right so you guys can see good. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is this goes in like this. Okay, it's gonna fit just like that. So we're gonna kind of jockey this through there. Start the nut. There's one. Got another bolt here somewhere. There it is. And this one's going to go through. You can see what I mean. You have to, like, it's not. takes a little bit of jockeying around and if you got the column and you're trying to line it all up it can be a challenge and I really like the idea of this part just staying on the truck and not having to um, take it off and on every time you change the column or so let's get this down tighten this up One. And I went with um, these button head bolts. The reason I did that was I they don't really show. And I like that idea. Made sense. So this is the uh, bracket. So what we do is just gonna slip that on the on the bottom. Okay. And then, oops. That a little bit through the floor. This guy goes like that. 
this guy goes like that. Then it's really nice having that those nuts welded on there because then you can just start it. Kind of holds it in place while you're uh, measuring. And then you can see here, before I had it, this column was way out here because this bracket, when it was up forward here, it would hit this edge. But by moving it back two inches, I can suck this thing in nice and snug to the, uh, to the dash and gives me more arm, you know, more uh, arm room. Okay, get that just lightly and then, oops, bang my head on the light. And then this part just goes through the floor like that. And then get the turn signal straight. And tighten these up. Nice and even. And there you go. And I got a turn. Tilt wheel and all that. All right, so let's see. Let me get the steering wheel. I gotta show you that. Okay, let's do that. Oh, you know what? I was just thinking of something, guys. When you're getting ready to put your, uh, figure out your steering column, you need to really have your, either the seat you're gonna use or something pretty close. I haven't decided what I'm gonna use yet, so I put my original seat back in here and I took these really high quality Harbor Freight seat covers. They're actually moving blankets. And just to simulate a seat. So uh, I tried a milk carton. Milk cartons don't work. <laughs> kind of rock around. I tried a five gallon bucket. It was too high. My head was hitting the roof. So if you got the seat or your seat, um, put it in. Because you'll need that to really you know, get your column exactly where you want it. So. But let me show you the steer wheel, because it is cool. All right. So check this out, guys. This steering wheel is um, patterned after a 1940 Ford. And what's neat about this is this, this whole assembly in here, this, the way it mounts to the column, is designed to fit any GM passenger car column from 1969 to 1994. And that's important because the I Did It column and the Flaming River columns, they, they are all set up for the same bolt pattern, 69 to 94 GM. And the, reason, the other reason I wanted that, if you choose a different steering wheel, you're gonna have to put an adapter on this and the adapter's gonna move the wheel closer to you, and they vary in size, some as much as three inches. So I wanted the column as far away as I could get it, and so that's what I did, all right? So let me show you how this looks in there, because it's cool. I will tell you that uh, I originally ordered this column from Speedway Motors, the same outfit I got the steering or the, I got the, I ordered the steering wheel from the same place I ordered the column. And uh, they kept back ordering the steering wheel. And so I went on eBay and guess what? I found this steering wheel on eBay, 50 bucks cheaper than Speedway Motors. So, and as far as I can tell, it's exactly the same. So I'm thinking they sourced it from the same company. Now, when you put your column in, you see this, this deal right here, this is your self canceller for your turn signal, all right? And you need to clock your steering column. And notice how when I turn this, the shaft turns as well, okay? This is important because I'll show you out in front what I'm talking about. The instruction manual says to put this about 10 o'clock, okay? So you put this at about 10 o'clock. And then notice inside here, there's a big hole right there, okay? These two holes here 
are for putting a steering wheel puller on to remove the steering wheel. This hole here is for this plastic extension, okay? So you line it up and then if your U-joints are clocked right with your steering box, you just kind of sight down it and lock that in place. And here you can show them inside there. If you can see inside there, guys, this, the plastic piece is inside that hole, okay? So I'm gonna put a nut on here just so it doesn't fall off. And let me show you how the, um, when it's clocked right, you could turn your turn signal, pretend like you're turning a corner and then come back and it will cancel. Go the other way, come back, it'll cancel. That's why that's really important to get that clocked properly. And let's go out in front and I'll show you the other part. As long as I'm out here, I'll put these nuts on here. If you decide to build one of these I, brackets, I highly suggest you weld the nuts on there, or the studs. It's a, it really makes it, you don't have to get a wrench inside. So isn't that nice? I like it. So, when you're clocking this stuff, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me get down here. So if the wheel, let's see if the wheel's pretty straight. Yeah, it is. So, okay, so I'm using the double D's uh, shaft and I made these wooden dowels that you saw in my last video. And what's cool about these is they slide in and out. And what's neat is, it allows you to move these together or apart to find that sweet spot where you can get the angle just right. And the idea for me, my understanding is the idea is get it where everything fits. Now, if it didn't fit quite right, you could, you could choke up on it a little bit, right? Because you got the wood allows you to figure it out and you can get it so where it, it gives you the most clearance possible. This goes down here like that. Now when you clock it, this double D down here, I hope you guys can see it. There's splines on the power steering rack. And so right now the column is where it's supposed to be. So in order for this double D shaft right, in order for this shaft to fit in here, it has to line up with this and it has to line up with that double D. Now, if it didn't line up, okay, because this is splined on here, you could just loosen this up, pull the U-joint off, turn it a little bit, and put it back on the spline and just keep moving it until all of these things lined up, okay? And that's what I'm talking about when I say you clock the uh, steering. And it's, it's not hard, it just takes a little bit of time because you want your steering wheel centered, right? And uh, you can fine tune your steering wheel afterwards with your adjustment on your tie rod ends, okay? If you need to adjust your steering later on when you're done, but get it as close as you can before because it uh, will make things a whole lot better. I mean, a whole lot better. Let me see. I think that's all. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, um, thanks again for watching, guys. And... Not sure what I'm going to work on next. I've got a couple things in the works. I need to put um, a remote transmission cooler in, and I made a little oops. I made a little box here that approximates the size, and so I've been underneath the truck, kind of find a place for it. So I'm going to order a cooler, 
And uh, I'll show you that. And let's see, I've got to do that. Fuel lines, brake lines, exhaust. And uh, I'm just going to keep plugging away. So thanks again for watching, guys. Remember, be safe in your shop. If it looks sketchy, it's probably sketchy. So don't do it. And um, I'll see you next time at Idaho Fabricator.